Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla News episode 195. Yes, I am having a bit of a flu and it has really put itself on my voice right now. But I managed to get through it because we do have a lot of news to go through this week. Because we continue to hear about the EV demand problems. While all the numbers shows us this is not true. And BYD lost their free cash flow in Q3, probably making Tesla sit at something like a 100% of the profits in the EV market. And in California, one out of every five cars sold is pure BEVs. And Elon's XAI has revealed their first product. And Boeing is giving up on satellite internet. In the same week that SpaceX announced that their Starlink business achieved break even cash flow. And we see some troubling numbers from both Ford and Stellantis this week. Meanwhile, Tesla is breaking new records and Q4 in Europe looks to become very explosive. And BMW is out making some big claims, saying Tesla is the one that needs to catch up to them, not the other way around. And I got a big announcement by the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. All of this and much, much more in today's episode. Let's dive right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. We keep hearing about a slowing demand for EVs, but this is simply not true. For example, the claim is made that the fact that Panasonic has reduced production of the 1865 Tesla battery cell in Japan for the S and X model in Asia, which is only a fraction of Tesla sales, only like 5%, and is already known to be low due to the economic weakness in the market, is a sign for low overall demand for BEVs. It is simply not true. The sales of the Tesla Model 3 and the Model Y are reaching records after records after records in the US, China and Europe, as we will get back to later in this video. And the Model Y is the best-selling car in the world. You cannot argue there is a demand problem for EVs. At the same time, the best-selling car in the world is an electric vehicle. It just doesn't make sense. And not to mention that EV sales are once again heading for a record year. The EV market will probably grow with a healthy 40% this year in a very high interest rate economy. So when interest rates will come down again, we will see an absolute explosion in the demand for EVs and the old guys are slowing down their rent so they will not be ready for it, but Tesla and some of the Chinese will. If there was a demand problem for EVs in general, Tesla would not be able to grow with 50%, but that is exactly what they're doing. From January to September, Tesla sold more BEVs in China than the entire German auto industry company. Bind. In Q3, Tesla sold more BEVs in the US than the entire auto industry combined. Just look at this chart and tell me, how is it that Tesla can sell 10 times more BEVs than the runner-up, but Ford is seeing a demand problem for their EVs? Exactly. It makes absolutely no sense. It is only an excuse from the old legacy automakers because they are losing money on selling their EVs and therefore don't want to because it will hurt their short-term profits and that their EVs are not compelling enough so they don't have the demand to get this quickly to high volume to get to economy of scale. This is just the old guys trying to confuse the customers. But while they're wasting time on that, Tesla is speeding along, making records after records after records. And Toyota joins the other big boys and is cutting their EV sale forecast by nearly 40% for 2023's physical year ending March 2024 for Toyota. In Toyota's latest questionable strategy shift, the company will lean into hybrids to avoid the price competition in the EV market. Toyota cuts its EV sale forecast from expected 202,000 units to only 123,000 units. That's almost 40% different and their BEV share will only be something like 1.3% by March 2024. So something we have to keep in mind with all of this is firstly, 
Tesla will sell about 1.8 million BEVs this year, so Toyota having trouble selling just a couple of hundred thousand units is kind of troubling to hear. Secondly, with all the old guys slowing down their EV production means they will also slow down the orders to their suppliers. So just like we saw under the pandemic, companies cancelling orders for chips and semiconductors, and then a year later they wanted more chips, there was not enough to get because the supplier had scaled down their production because of the lack of demand for chips. The same thing will happen again for the legacy automakers, but this time around, this is self-inflicted and not caused by a pandemic. In a year or two, when the interest go down again and the BEV market share is much higher than it is today, the old guys will not be ready to scale up fast as their supplier will not be ready to meet their demand. Remember, it takes at least a year from when you put in an order for some semiconductors until you can expect to have them, as we learned under the pandemic. Pandemic. The old guys are shooting themselves in the foot to get some short-term profits, but lose long-term. We know BYD is basically the only other automaker beside Tesla that are making money on selling EVs. But in Q3, BYD did lose billions of dollars. So we talk about Tesla versus BYD all the time, but it's actually quite a bit hard to compare these two companies as BYD also is still making hybrids and we don't know for sure if their money they make on their EVs actually comes from their BEVs or just from their hybrids. And the second thing is that BYD is making much more affordable cars than Tesla is. BYD's average selling price is about one third of that of Tesla. So that would be like comparing Porsche to Ferrari, just not the same thing, right? But that being said, BYD is the closest we have to anything resembling competition. And we know that BYD was probably the only other automaker that was making a little bit of money on their EV business. Not much, but probably a little bit. But that all went away in Q3 for BYD, showing us what a thin margin the others are working with. BYD's third quarter financial report revealed a significant downturn in their free cash flow, plummeting by $7.3 billion from a robust $4.8 billion to a concerning negative at 2.6 billion. So that basically means that we have a situation that we have seen before, both with Tesla, but also with Apple back in the days in the smartphone market. Tesla in Q3 properly sat on something like 100% of the profits in the global electric vehicle market. So sure, the BEV market share might be shrinking in the US and elsewhere, and their profits might be down in Q3 because they are cutting prices, but at least they still have a profit. And in Q3, Tesla was probably the only one that had a profit on the EV business. We know Ford lost about $36,000 on every EV sold, and most others also have above $30,000 losses per EV they sell. So people can call Tesla's Q3 a bad quarter all they want. I'm still sticking with my review. All things taken into calculation, with high interest rate and upgrade of Tesla's production line and so on, Tesla had a great Q3. So good, in fact, Compared to the competition, Tesla had 100% of the profits in the EV market. And combined with the fact that the legacy automakers are slowing down because they lose too much money, it's not looking too good for the so-called competition. As AJ also revealed on X that his research revealed a concerning trend. Quarter over quarter, global automotive free cash flow have experienced a sharp decline of 41%. It's important to consider the following factors while interpreting this result. And that is basically that this is only from 10 automakers that represent about 50% of the overall market but still very concerning trend here the old guys are losing a lot of cash very quickly and are trying to convince people there is an EV demand problem so they can cut back on their expenses for their EV adventure so they stop some of all the bleeding they are doing we are really at a pivotal moment in time right now after a decade of hearing about the competition is coming Tesla sits on 100% of the profits in the EV industry and the old guys are crumbling and not coming anymore but scaling back. Yeah, let that one sink in.
But BYD is not down for the count. They just lost their free cash flow in one quarter, but they are not slowing down like all the legacy automakers are. October should be yet another record month for BYD. They should have delivered 165,505 units during this month. So if they can do that in the last two quarters as well, I think BYD could overtake Tesla in Q4. If that is the case, that will be the first time BYD sells more pure BEVs than Tesla. As we know, they were neck and neck in Q3 with Tesla just a couple of thousand in front. So it will probably be a very close race between the two giants here in the last quarter. But again, EV demand problems are nowhere to be seen for BYD or Tesla. California says electric cars now makes up a fifth of the auto sales. Oh, <laughs> that can't be true. There is a demand problem for EVs, right? Well, new data, you know, the thing you can actually make some conclusions from. Yeah, new data shows that the first nine months of 2023, BEVs accounted for 21.5% of the overall car market in California. A figure that's more than doubled in the past two years. So what will happen if this figure doubles again over the next two years? Hmm... But this is just such a good showcase of how the mainstream media wants to paint this picture of Tesla's losing BEV market share, while Tesla's dominance is absolutely astronomical. As they write in this article, Tesla's lead in California electric vehicle market has slipped this year, according to the state's registration data. Its overall market share fell to 62.9% in the first nine months of 2023, compared to its 71.8% share the year before, Mercedes and BMW. W both gain ground among EV sellers. And then we look at the best-selling models in California because it sounds like Tesla is in trouble and, and Mercedes and BMW are eating into Tesla sales, but when we look at the top 10 list of best-selling models year-to-date through September, uh, the Mercedes doesn't even have a model in the top 10, so... Okay, but BMW do, it's the i4 with 7,107 units. Again, Tesla's Model Y with almost 107,000 units. So yeah, Tesla is clearly in huge trouble here. Just look at the number two in this list. Oh, wait, that's also a Tesla. That's the Tesla Model 3. That is probably more in direct competition with the i4 as they are both sedans, but Tesla sells more than nine times the units than BMW. You can take all the other non-Teslas of this top 10 list and combine their sales and we will end up with 60,682 units. So not even enough to beat the Tesla Model 3. Yeah, Tesla sales are definitely slipping, right? Yeah, it has never looked worse. But hey, they need something to throw a Tesla and the BEV market share is pretty much the only thing they have left. And we know that that will continue to go down, so this is something they can continue to print some nice headlines about. Tesla, so market share is slipping. Yeah, their overall car market share is slipping right up that chart. And even if we look at the best-selling brand in California, Tesla is actually the second best-selling brand only after Toyota. And it looked like Tesla could overtake them soon enough. Very impressive. BMW is bullish about the potential of its own battery and Neue Klasse underpinning to overtake electric vehicle rivals, including market leader Tesla. The automaker's confidence comes as it started production of its first battery cell sample of a Gen 6 cell. Yeah, I don't know if they have had five different of these cells, or this is just a name, but which have been designed to power its new generation of all electric cars starting in 2025. When asked by Automotive News Europe how BMW would close the gap to the rivals, especially Tesla, BMW Group's production boss Milan said, Tesla need to close the gap with us. In fact, we don't see a gap to Tesla. <laughs> uh, they do write some numbers, but nothing to back it up, how they get to these numbers or anything, of course. But they say the round cell promised 20% more energy density, up to 30% more range, resulting in 800 kilometers of travel on a single charge, and 60% lower production-related carbon emission than the current generation of their prismatic cells. So nothing about the cost of producing 
improving it and the scalability. Also because BMW will not be making the cell that is CATL. But can't wait to see these new EVs from BMW that will supposedly be Tesla's electric cars by 2025 because of this sample of a battery cell. Because it must be all about the battery cell, right? They're talking about here. Because a production of EVs, well, there is quite the gap between Tesla and BMW. But nice to hear some confidence from BMW. Even though their hydrogen car is also supposed to come out in 2025 as well. And this is supposed to be the new hip thing, right? And not their EVs. So, yeah, just all very confusing from BMW, but we will see what happens. But more big claims from the legacy automakers that are out there in the future. Can't wait till the day they say we have caught up to Tesla today. And not many years down the road we will catch up to Tesla. It's always in the future, right? <laughs> there will be Tesla. But let's see what BMW's new cylindrical cell can do by 2025 compared to what Tesla's 4680 cell can do by 2025. Call me a Tesla fanboy, but I doubt they will be able to beat Tesla's technology. And squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla shorts. The new Volvo boss drives a Tesla. Accidentally took the wrong car, as he said. <laughs> he is the Tesla boss who was brought back to Volvo Cars to speed up the development of electric vehicles. Research and development manager Anna Zabel drives his Tesla Model Y to work. Yeah, when the CEO of a legacy automakers drive a Tesla, you know he knows. So Elon Musk was on Joe Rogan's podcast again, this time only smoking a cigar, not weed. But Joe thought he could shoot an arrow through the Cybertruck, and Elon bet him a dollar he couldn't, so they went out to find out. And Elon won a dollar. The Cybertruck is built tough, not big boy tough. So just if you are wondering what an arrow normally does to a door, here you go. And Elon also revealed in the podcast that the Cybertruck will come with something called Beast Mode. Can't wait to get all the details, including price, on the 30th of November. And we got a huge charging station coming online in Germany, as a train station will set up 259 charges, so people can charge their car while they take the train for work. So only slow charges, but still very nice to see. This is how all parking lots should look like, a train station, airports, malls, and much, much more. And we see that even though Hyundai has made a lot of advertising for the Ionic 6, they apparently still need to do some price cuts, as they cut prices of the car by as much as $4,100. So even though they had Kevin Bacon making an ad for the Ionic 6, and just on YouTube alone it had over 145 million views, not to mention Hyundai had another version of the ad with Kevin Bacon up for the Super Bowl they also paid millions of dollars for. So with all that ad, made for this single car it should be flying off the shelf according to some people that really want Tesla to advertise but even with all these ads and hundreds of hundreds of millions of views they still have to make price cuts what do you know while Tesla does sell 10 times as many BEVs in the US without advertising than Hyundai so I guess they have to do something and the one that is copying Tesla the most, Xping, continues to copy Tesla as much as they can. Now they are showing off a copy of the Cybertruck. It has six wheels and a drone. And that is not the only one taking some designs from the Cybertruck. Here is another one from Chang'an, a prototype of a new kind of vehicle with a back like the Cybertruck. Yeah, everyone wants to get a little bit of the Cybertruck hype, right? And Tesla workers refused to support union strike in Sweden. As some employees said, they saw no reason to participate. They believe their current work conditions and wages are superior to those of their previous jobs. And hopefully Tesla's workers also knows how much damage a union can do to a company and slow down progress as the UAW has shown in the US. And Tesla wins the first a US autopilot trial involving fatal crash. The case in California State Court was filed by two passengers in a 2019 crash who accused the company of knowing autopilot was defective when it sold the car. Tesla argued that human error caused the crash and as we know Tesla has all the data so 
they of course knew. So nice to see that Tesla won this case, as horrible the crash like this is. It is nice to see that Tesla actually won this one, as they have the data to show what happened. And this would not be the last trial against Tesla, as many more will probably come. But nice to have this case to show, no, this is not a full self-driving car, no matter what the car does, you, as a driver, are at all time responsible for the car. There are so many places to get green energy from we have not tapped into yet. This week we saw a new video from World Economic Forum about these turbines in the metro people walk through. The turbines was designed by student in France engineering school and even though they don't make much energy, they do make enough if every metro station had this installed, it would generate enough energy to power a whole metro line. Just from these tiny little things. Just like we see sidewalks that generate energy as well, just so many ways we can get green energy that has not yet been tapped into fully just yet. And Boeing halts plans of Starlink competitor. Boeing gives up an FCC license to operate a low earth orbital satellite constellation which would have involved 147 satellites. Boeing surrendered the license which was granted in 2021, but doing so the company also had to pay the US government 2.2 million dollars through a fortifier bound. Boeing original filed the license in 2017 with the goal of serving customers through the proposed satellite internet service, but since then the market has drastically changed as SpaceX Starlink has nearly 5,000 satellites in orbit and is already serving over 2 million customers. As Elon rightfully replied, competing with SpaceX is tough. I would rather add impossible. And to put a little more salt in the wound of Boeing, Elon also wrote on X, excited to announce that SpaceX Starlink has achieved break-even cash flow. Excellent work by the great team. Starlink is also now a majority of all active satellites and will have launched a majority of all satellites cumulatively from Earth by next year. But not only that, the United States Space Force has awarded SpaceX $1.23 billion in rocket contract for 10 launches. Nice. Yeah, there is just no competing with SpaceX. And as AJ wrote on X, a Ford strategic price cut for the F-150 Lightning have made a tangible impact, as reflected in the recent October sales figures. Since it launched in January 2022, Ford has sold 31,589 F-150 Lightning vehicles in the US, accounting for 2.5% of the total F-150 sales during this period. However, the surge in sales during October 2023 significantly boosted of the F-150 Lightning shares, elevating it to 6.9% of total F-150 sales of the specific month. These numbers underscore a pivotal role of affordability in influencing customers' choice and reshaping the landscape of vehicle sales. So yet another example of advertising not really doing anything, but as soon as you make your product more affordable, the sales rise fast. And Volkswagen would not add a fourth battery plant while the EV market remains sluggish. Well, BYD just set a new record, but anyway, let's just say it is sluggish. But this is of course means that Volkswagen is delaying the EV battery plants even more than they told us at their power day. They held right after Tesla's battery day. And we do see a lot of ships heading for Europe with refreshed Model 3 that all will arrive within November. So it should be enough time to get them all out to new happy customers by the end of the year. As we see deliveries has started all over Europe but that will just continue and really start accelerating over the next two months. So Q4 should be a very good one, if not even explosive here in Europe. As we also see, October will be a new record in Europe for Tesla. This is already clear from sales reported by only half of the European countries, which also account for 54% of the sales volume. So even though we are missing sales numbers from half of the countries, we already have beaten the previous record for Tesla in Europe in October. Yeah, it's not easy selling these electric vehicles nobody wants, except if you're called Tesla of course and set new records after records after record after record, while the old guys are crying in the corner about EV demand problem. And speaking of EV demand going down, Tesla has passed double the amount of sales in Australia than last year's total. Not bad numbers, think most companies would call that a success to be up 204% from last year's total already with October 
numbers. But we did see some more troubling numbers from Ford this week as well, as Ford just revealed their October 2023 US sales numbers, which reveals Ford's truck sales are down 10.5% year over year. And their ICE business in general was down 8.8%. So their F-150 sales are declining. And that is not their lightning, but their profitable ICE versions, which has declined, dropping below levels observed during the COVID lockdown. This should raise concerns among investors as the F-150 series plays a crucial role for Ford's bottom line. But of course, the UAW strike has played a big role in this decline, so let's hope this was just a big blip on the radar and Ford will be able to get back to normal levels the rest of the year. But we also got some bad numbers from Stellantis that saw a significant 12% quarter over quarter decrease in total revenue, falling from 51 billion euros in the second quarter to 45 billion euros in the third quarter. This decline was primarily fueled by the staggering 25% drop in revenue quarter over quarter in Europe, where the vehicle unit sales plummeted by 27%. Ouch. And we saw a Plaid Model S embarrass a Lamborghini on the drag strip. Yeah, performance ice cars are dead. And we did get to see the Cybertruck's subtrunk in action this week as well. And we do see Tesla has a lot of new job posting for their Tesla bot, and even some on night shift. So it seems like Tesla would like to work on this bot 24-7. Nice. And this Six Flag Magic Mountain breaks ground on 12.37 megawatt solar car park and energy project that will soon be able to offset 100% of the park's energy use with solar. Nice. Exactly how all huge car parks should look like in the future. And Elon did an interview on AI Summit this week. I will leave a link to the whole video down below. And if you didn't already know it, Tesla did share Zach's post about how easy it is to share access to your Tesla to your friends if they need to borrow it. Just go to the app and press security and drivers, manage drivers, add driver, and generate a link you just text to someone. And all they have to do is just open the link. Simple and easy. Tesla showing off their software supremacy. And what a surprise, EV driving range is even worse than advertised. On average, electric vehicles fall short on their advertised range by 12.5%, according to the Society of Automotive Engineers study. And this is just so stupid. The same thing goes for ICE cars. They never do what they are advertised to do. It is always the absolutely best case scenario. I have never got my old ICE cars to go as far on a liter of gasoline as advertised. I'm sure I could get it to do it, but I would never try it that way. So I have never tried it. Just like I have actually got my Tesla to do the WLTP range they say it does. I would just never drive it that way, but it was actually the first video I ever did on my YouTube channel to prove that my Model 3 could actually do the WLTP range. And it did. And I actually got a little bit further than advertised. So just like the ICE car, it's about best case scenario. So this should not come as a surprise and has nothing to do with the fact that they are electric. And Tesla made some nice discount in Denmark for the X and S owners, as Danish Tesla owners with free supercharger on the old S and X that Tesla gave back in the beginning can now also transfer it to a new S and X and the Model Y order, as long as they take delivery by December 31th. So that should probably get a few owners of the first Model S in Denmark to get a new one, as they can continue to charge their EVs for free. Nice. And Elon wrote on X that XAI will release its first AI to a selected group. In some important respect, it is the best that currently exists. Now that's very exciting. The pace they have at XAI is just amazing. The company was only announced less than four months ago, and now they're ready to release a product that in some aspect will be something that is best in class. And we found out what the new thing was, and it was Croc. XAI is a version of ChatGPT. But what makes this different from Chat is that Croc has a real-time access to info via the X platform, which is a massive advantage over other models, as Elon wrote on X. And this will be available for all X premium subscribers when it comes out of beta. And the AI is made to have a sense of humor. So it's going to be very exciting to check it out when we all get access to it.
And even though Mercedes has signed a deal with Tesla to get access to the North American charging standard, they are still making their own supercharger. And the first one just went live in China. And the chargers will be capable of 480 kilowatt charging, so that's very nice. And Mercedes expects to buy 2030 to have 2000 stations with 10,000 stalls. Nice. And the two Dutch people that have been driving their modified Skoda Enyaq all the way from Holland down through Africa and back that I have reported on from time to time has come to an end. Their long journey is over and a great testimony to the ability of the electric car. And we did see a picture of Lathrop factory where over $500 million worth of maker packs was spotted. Nice to see all this progress at the Lathrop factory. And I got a pretty big announcement to make, that me and one of my buddies are going to launch a new YouTube channel together, and of course on other medias as well. But this will not take anything away from Best in Tester that will be run as normal, as we are getting help for this one. We will call it Best in Tech, but it will not be another boring channel about the new smartphone. We will go travel the world and test out some of the most fun and crazy gadgets out there, and make this hopefully a very fun, informative, entertaining and well produced travel videos going around the world trying out all of this crazy new stuff. In between these big productions we will have smaller production videos about the cutting edge technology out there. Not a new computer but more futuristic stuff that might not even be out there to the public yet. So think this is going to be a lot of fun and I hope you will really enjoy this new channel but we are in the making of all of these huge productions. So it will take time until we can launch the channel itself. But we are right now trying to get access to all of these great toys out there like the Jetson and Submarines or this huge ass exoskeleton robots and any other kind of fun robots or things to drive. So if you know anyone working at these companies or, or know of any fun technology out there we should try out or maybe even ways to get in contact with these companies so that would be absolutely awesome if you can help out so we can start traveling the world in the beginning of next year and bring you all this good new fun stuff by mid 2024. So if you have any information, please contact me on my email bestintesla at gmail.com if you have any contacts or know of some fun stuff we should try out. Can't wait to bring you Best in Tech coming next year with fun and informative and big production videos, so stay tuned for that. And before we end up with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to my newest members of this YouTube channel. My two new YouTube members, Christian Bullet, a former executive producer of mine. Thank you so much for your continued support, my friend. And David Isada Rodriguez. Thank you so much for all your support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this new show. Thank you. And the support of the week winner t-shirt is still out of stock, so we will get back to that hopefully very soon. So let's end off with a bit of fun. There's always one in the flock, right? Wait. That is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help this video out a lot so others can find it on YouTube. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe and notification button so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. And don't forget if you want to become an executive producer and get news articles during the week, some exclusive videos, early access and access to all my spreadsheets, research and charts, head over to bestintester.com and join with the members button. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as one dollar become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. And also as simple as hitting the super like button. 
But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't miss out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. Ah, uh, made it through.